Bruce Clay formed uh, 1902, so they've been around for nearly 120 years. And we're the covered arena in the middle there, the Ceres Arena, which can seat up to 5,000. And it's proved a brilliant venue. Well, here's what we've seen. That match uh, lasting an hour and 40, the third match between Gideon and Saul Camelio, Astrup and Rasmussen, and then Christy and Antonsen as well. It's been phenomenal. Uh, but now, the chance for Alfie and Ardiento to seal the deal against Christensen and Soga. But as we saw a moment ago, surprises do happen. So the Indonesians being introduced. Petra Alfian, Mohamed Arviento. And the ovation is for Matthias Christensen and Frederick Tugo. And they need something to rouse them again, the home crowd. Let's do the toss. Red or black? Red for you, black for you. It's black. Ready to serve. They have to receive. Good side. Okay, good luck. Well, certainly it's the Indonesians who are the more jubilant of the uh, spectators right now, why wouldn't they be after that amazing win for Christie in an hour and 40 minutes. So we move on to the doubles, where the Indonesians will start favourite. They are ranked seven in the world, they have been as high as five, that was about two and a half years ago. On a World Championship bronze in Basel in 2019. Been together a long, long time, these two. They actually won their first event as a pair way back in 2014 at an international event in Indonesia. They were both involved in Bangkok, winning a bronze medal. They've won a host of uh, tournaments together, including Super 500 events in both Korea and Malaysia. Arviento's 25, just a year younger than his partner. They had a victory against Thailand in straight games, went down to the Chinese Taipei pair, Li and Wang, in three games. So they should be relatively fresh played as much as uh, some and on the other side of the net there's Christensen who's 27 now joined the national team back in his uh, late teens was a part of that Thomas Cup gold medal winning squad of 2016 and he's won all kinds of men's doubles and mixed doubles titles over the last uh, six or seven years 24 years of age is his partner Frederick uh, Subu 24 is uh, just three years younger than his partner. He wasn't in the Thomas Cup team back in uh, 2016. They've had a couple of wins, including against uh, the Indians and the Germans. Went down to Kang and Kim of Korea in straight games. Evo Castle of Switzerland is in charge of this match.
And peering through that contraction from the service judges chair is Gunnar's Lusferis of Latvia. Martin Olsen of Denmark is next to me and you'd think Martin, this could go big ask for the two Danes to win this and, and keep their country in the tie. Yes it is, it's a very big ask, it's a, it's a completely new combination and Christiansen, Matthias Christiansen has not played that many doubles, level doubles for a long time so it's a big ask and the Indonesian combination is just actually Indonesia. awesome. Presented by Pacha Alvian and Muhammad Rian Ardianto. And on my left, Denmark. Represented by Matthias Christiansen and Frederik Zürgo. Well, cue the rapturous applause. They're going to need all the support they can get, you fancy, here. Frederik Zürgo and Muhammad Rian Ardianto. La ball. Play. Mark to get this doubles underway. Service oh. over. One love. Right idea, but wrong execution. Yeah, it, it would have been a very, very clever shot. The two Indonesians are powerful. They are hard hitters, especially uh, the answer from the back. Really have a massive a hammer. And uh, Alfian at, uh, at the front is, is quite superb. That's way, way in. Well, they'll take the points anywhere they can get them, the <laughs> Danish pair. They want to leave, yeah. leave shots like that that fall in by you know, five or six centimetres. Yeah. Alfin is having a bite, bear star. He is giving, gifted the three points away. Good defence in the early part of that rally from the Danes, but in the end, the Indonesians found a way. Not sure this is going to be a match full of lengthy rallies. No, they, the two Danes are hard hitting. Um, Arianto is hard hitting. Not saying that uh, Alfian is not. So we have some good hitters on the court. Definitely not the style of play that the two Indonesians want to play. They like to be on the attack. So all credit to the Danes for sort of going on the attack from the very word go and really put their opponents under pressure. See whether they could keep it up. Easy put away that time. Yeah. So there's no doubt that if the Indonesians have studied the videos, they would know that they have to attack Matthias Christiansen. His defence, as soon as it comes sort of below the tape, it's, it's really a little bit tricky for him. Another point gifted by Alfian. Hand of apology, but he's very grateful for that net cord. It wasn't a great shot.
that one will be long. Yeah, that's a good play by Adianzo. I, I like how he blocked one or two of the, those shots, really played well. It didn't look like they were expecting the flicker at all there. It was uh, a well-concealed weapon. Good shot, good kill from Ardiente. Sugo setting up a very nice uh, smashing opportunity for Matthias Christensen. Seven, oh. It all started with a very good block on the return of serve from uh, Sugo, Felix Sugo. what we see from Arianto, that's that's how we know him. That's absolutely wonderful smash. Eight, seven. Well, one has to say that Arianto have a tendency of getting nervous sometimes, so uh, that could work against uh, the Indonesians. Poor serve, good attack from uh, so that's Saved on more than one occasion. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and it's a winner. It's a winner. Oh, <laughs> unbelievable! <laughs> How on earth did they win that point? Yeah. Uh, Apologising straight away, Adianto. Absolutely amazing. Yeah, tried to look at this. He was as good playing from the ground as he's on his feet. Smashed it straight <laughs> against Christians. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I had a couple of 
It's a good fortune with the net court. Nothing that either Sugo or Christensen could have done about that. No, no. <laughs> That's just perfection. Good smash from uh, Sugo. Really good power from him. But it's very unusual to see uh, Alfin and Adianto being so defensive. Normally they go out guns blazing, attack 100%. And that's why a lot of uh, badminton fans, they love that combination. Alfian and Alianta because they're so entertaining to watch. Yeah, well maybe they're just almost subconsciously playing it a little safe because they know the significance of winning this match. It would obviously take Indonesia through to the final tomorrow. So, they're still well in touch. Christensen yeah. and uh, Sugar. Definitely. The chances are that uh, China is going to the final tomorrow. 17 13 up. And the second game having won the first. The second men's doubles. And that will be 3 1 for China against Japan. Excellent, excellent flick surf. Fooled them a couple of times with that already. Adianto has really played well that defensive shot cross court from him puts Sugo under so much pressure. Really lovely, lovely shot. Great play. what the Danes needs to do. Take any given opportunity to go for the attack. They've got two strong smashes. Both of them have the ability to work from the back of the court. And uh, Sugo, probably the stronger of the two at the front. Again, a mistake from uh, Alfian. Every time the two Danes threaten to come back at the Indonesians, they just find a way to sneak ahead again. A little three-point cushion here. Well, oh, that was phenomenal power from the back of the court from Christensen. Yep, he's got really good power. That's got the biscuits in brigade going. Excellent shot.
Oh, that's going to be in. in. Yeah, in decision. And yet again, they win a point. They look very unlikely to secure. to receive and once again it's in they really have used that weapon they very have. cleverly they have and the Danes just have to take note It's a good lead here for Alfian and Adianzo. And the Danes have to find some answers. Well, that's one way. Yeah, Sergo is strong in the net, closing the net down very nicely. And one of the things that's really important for the Danes is no matter how it's going, they have to keep up the spirit and believe that they can do it, no matter what. As soon as the head is down, the Indonesians will just play better and better. And they're just a couple of points away now from securing the opening game here. Gonna fly out. Yeah. So here are seven game points for Alfian and Ardiente. A little bit of defiance. That's good play by Alfin. So that is clever, clever. 21 14, then they secure the opening game. But look at that beautiful block from Alfin at the net while his opponent is standing there, just blocking it across to the backhand side in such a beautiful manner. <laughs> Yes, 
Tony Lama on this replay that China have now beaten Japan in the other semi-final. So they put their place for tomorrow and Indonesia are one game away from joining them. That was a good flick south. It's time for the Danes. Good to me as well. Yeah, I actually think it was inside the line, but I see what Hawkeye says. Well, it was interesting to see that Christiansen was indicating that perhaps that serve was uh, higher than 115. We were talking to the umpire, and we were right. Well done, Trevor. So, that is interesting what you were saying. I wonder if, like, what's the purpose of that? Trying to get the service judge uh, just overhearing it or some such thing? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Trying to influence it your way. Just long. A strong attacking pair. The two smashes from Adianta at the back and then the interception from Alfian. They're so naturally attacking. But the Danes must try to give them nothing to feed off. Make sure that they play the shots in such a manner that they're falling, dropping below the tape exactly as what the Indonesians here did to Matthias Christiansen. Suddenly he had to lift from a low position and there was trouble straight away. The Danes have to try to do that to Alfian and Asian to it. Easier said than done, I know that, but uh, that's the way forward for the Danes. Again, Dane's forced to lift. That's a good defensive shot from Sugo. 
What's brave defence though while it lasted? Didn't last long enough from Denmark's point of view. And the Indonesians starting to pull away. He or she might not remember too much about it in a few years' time. Again, he's just slowing the uh, Indonesians down a little bit. I don't think they'll bother, they'll bother too much by it. <laughs> you almost see that coming, couldn't yeah, you? Yeah, it, it's coming here. Yeah. Yeah. Four out of five. And the Danes really have to take notice now. They get so much under pressure. taking on a distinctly one-sided look at the moment. The problem is, once Alfie and Ardiento get on top of you, get their claws into you, they don't often let go. No. Quick serve again. Yeah, it looks very, very much like one-way traffic. Designed look, isn't there, in the body language of Christensen and Sugor at the moment. And that's what I tried to allude to earlier. No matter what the score is, they have to believe that they can do it because otherwise they're just dwindling away. Yeah, I think the other thing about it is that that negative body language transmits itself to the crowd as well, and they've gone a bit flat, and it's 11 2 at the interval. of no return for Denmark in this year's Thomas Cup. Big offensive work. Well, I think the coach might have had a word there in that interval and just said, look, let's uh, show a bit of pride, exactly as you were saying, Morton, in, in this last second part of the second game yeah they have to believe i usually say even though even though you're the only one in the whole world believing you can do it you must believe that you can do it never say die that's a nice one that's really well played by chris jansen and 
and the crowd will certainly come with them if they keep on showing a bit of heart and a bit of spirit and shots like that. Oh, that'd be a bit sicker. I actually think it could have been a winner. Yeah. Had it not clipped the top of the tape. Fine margins. We're talking about a centimetre or so. And in your language, half an inch. <laughs> Just about to say that. <laughs> Greater consistency, greater court craft. And you'd probably say as, as a team, obviously they've been together a, a lot, lot longer. Yeah, they have, they have played, I know they're not top five at the moment in the world, but they've played top five quality badminton for quite a number of years now. Yeah. So, uh, so yes, they're very good. They came second at the uh, Asian Games in 2018 against uh, Sukumoyo and, and Gideon. At that time, Gideon and Sukumoyo, they were outstanding. Not nigh on unbeatable. Yeah. yeah. And it went all the way. I think they lost 24-22 in the third and final game. So, yes, we are talking about a, a fantastic men's doubles pair. Well, there's a cheap point back, but it's uh, not going to be enough, I don't think against these two who just need another six points to confirm Indonesia's place in the final. Good to see the fighting spirit still though. One point at a time from Christensen and Sugal's standpoint. from uh, Sugo. I, I must say I like the, the attitude from Sugo. He, he's really trying. I know it's, it's completely desperate but he's doing his best. You can see how he's trying to be as alert as possible all the time. Yeah, and your best yeah. is all you can do. Yeah. Best efforts. We're going to have uh, a challengeless Hawkeye here because the line judge was unsighted. Clip the line. Well, a little run 
the points here for the Danes. Make the score look a lot more respectable into double figures now. That's how to stop that and run in its tracks. Yeah, the, the way that that mid-court area was closed down by the Indonesian pair was just awesome. Matthias Christiansen, he thought he could get away with a mixed double shot, but straight away that gap was closed. Into the net it goes, and just three points away now. Called in. To groan round the arena. Yeah, Denmark had the chance, but it meant that Anna Santonsen had to win, and he had a fantastic window 6 1 up in the third and final game. And suddenly he made four or five extremely easy mistakes at the front of the court, and uh, Christie was way back into it, and he suffered the consequences. Yeah, it's amazing the way that, that turned round. In that position. It's a good little comeback from the Danes, however, possibly a little bit too little too late. But as you said, it's definitely creating respectable scores. So here are six match points to get Indonesia into tomorrow's Thomas Cup final. And that'll do it, that will do it, 21-14 in the second game, a very solid display from the two Indonesians, world-class doubles players, and Denmark's uh, brave challenge to get to the final of the Thomas Cup on home soil has come to an end after a semi-final that only went four games, but lasted more than four and a half hours, it was a battle. And as you said, Morton, it was that Antonsen singles match that was really the key to it. It was the key, and we all knew that uh, Denmark had to take the two singles, and uh, of course Indonesia taking the two doubles, and then it would all be, yeah, all depending on how who would play best in the third singles, and that is a very 50-50. But it was the second men's singles that really did the trick for Indonesia. The crowd will certainly appreciate the effort towards the end of that second game from the two Danes. And battled away manfully, but in the end, just had to accept they were beaten by uh, the classier pair. Yeah, it was all out attacking the last point from the Indonesians, relentlessly 
with Atianto at the back and then all finished by Alfian at the front as a usual combination between these two players. And that's what it means to be in the final tomorrow. Uh, Coach Harry IP is very, very happy. Been instrumental in the men's doubles in Indonesia for years. So Axelson got the days off to the perfect start against uh, Anthony Gintin. Uh, as expected, Ginya and Sulkamuljo came back quickly to level the tie in the doubles. Then what proved to be the key match really, Anders Antonsen losing to Jonathan Christie 21-16 in the third after a match lasting an hour and 40 minutes. And as we've just seen, uh, Alfian and Ardianto just proving too strong for Christensen and Suga winning 21-14, 21-14 in just over half an hour. Well, that's about it for our coverage. Uh, let's show you where we are in terms of the draw. So China, as we mentioned, came through 3-1 against Japan, which means tomorrow's final, which you can see live right here, will be Indonesia versus the holders, China. I hope you've enjoyed our coverage. Uh, Trevor Harris, Morton Frost and our whole team. Bye for now.